Hey everyone, it's Damien from the Student Physio Podcast. Um, I hope you're well. Um, we've got an interesting podcast for you today um, where we're going to be interviewing and speaking to uh, Archie James, who is an MSc graduate. Uh, he graduated in over the summer uh, and uh, from King's. And he was also the academic secretary uh, for the Physio Society for my cohort uh, of um, new starters uh, when we were year, our year one. So we don't know Archie very well, but we know him a little bit um, from his contact with us. Uh, and we had a we had a very good good um, uh, time getting to know him um, a little bit over those um, over those um, initial initial um, months in university. Uh, and we found all of his input very useful. Uh, so it's really interesting to, to now have a chat to him now that he's qualified um, and uh, he is now moving on um, in, in his career. Uh, no Sophie today, as you can probably already see. Um, she's unwell at time of recording. Uh, so it's just me you're left with, unfortunately. And uh, I will um, try, try my best. Um, as always, please do get in contact with us. Give us some feedback. Give us some information. Tell us what you want to hear from the podcast. Tell us what you do get out of it, what you don't get out of it. Um, and any any good information like that is always really useful. You can contact me on all our social or us on all our social medias. Um, um, Instagram uh, is the best one, which is um, Student Physio Podcast. Uh, and if failing that, you can always contact me directly on my KCL email address, which is damien.teva at kcl.ac.uk. Uh, and similarly, Sophie's open to, to contact if you find her on Instagram as well. Give her give her um, um, a little message if need be. So we're going to get jump straight into it now and uh, look forward to, um, to, to hearing your feedback and, and, and information from you about what you thought of this one as well. Uh, and uh, I'd like to introduce to you Archie James. Hello, thank you for having me. How are you? Well, good. I realise that's the classic podcast thing to say. So thank you so much for having me on here. But, uh, no yeah, problem I'm, at all. I'm no, that's good. Well, that's good. You. That's absolutely brilliant. Um, so uh, as I said in the intro, um, Archie uh, helped m my cohort out much with his, um, um, as he was the academic um, rep for the society. Um, so what we want to do, Archie, if it's okay with you, we just want to find out a bit more about you, um, what makes you tick, your background, all that kind of stuff. Um, and then if it's okay, we'll come on to the um, academic um, uh, repping side afterwards, if that's all right. Sure. So tell us about yourself. Who's Archie James? Oh, God, that's such a philosophical question. Uh, <laughs> no, it's not. I wish it was that exciting. Um, oh, God, yeah. So who is Archie James? A current, well, just recently graduated physio. Um, oh, God, I think that's about it. A, a Suffolk country boy at the minute. Um, I don't know. Do you, want, do you want me to give you a bit about, I don't know, where I started to now or yeah absolutely how, well I mean how did you get in, how did you get into physio oh so it kind of starts so my previous degree I, I went to a ballet school and you know did all of that and then I ended up working in a ballet company and that's all it was all very intense but I really enjoyed working with the physios there you know we had oh. them in ballet school and in a ballet company as uh, injuries are quite um, prevalent and I found them really fascinating. Uh, I, I, I loved kind of their thought process and what was going on and the anatomy charts on the side. They're all very exciting and mysterious. And um, yeah, so when I eventually decided to, to leave my job and move back home and think, what, what the hell do I do? Um, found out about the MSc pre-reg because I had a degree beforehand, yeah. uh, blagged my way in and uh, yeah, two years later, here I am. That's it. That's basically my life in a nutshell. Wow, that's amazing. Um, so just a, a supplementary on that one. Then, how did you, how did you find the challenges going from um, an arts, having an arts background, an arts degree, to switching to more scientific and and, and more um, uh, more academia based? Oh, I mean, absolutely petrifying, terrifying, mm. because. I, I hadn't even heard of PubMed before I even started. And there was this, you know, in the ballet world, you're not exactly writing an essay with references to someone who's measured how long it takes to put on tights this way to that way. Sure. It's, you know, it, it's very, well, artsy. Yeah. Um, so to suddenly have to not only 
back up what you're saying with a lot of evidence, but to be able to critique it and have it this kind of scientific mind on was a whole new learning experience. Um, so it, it wasn't just learning the anatomy, the physiology, uh, the various bits, which again are complex. It, it was just a, a whole new way of thinking that I'd never experienced before. Um, but also I think on my application, I may have sold myself in a way that perhaps wasn't as as uh, as true. So obviously I, I might have chucked myself into the deep end anyway. Right. Okay. <laughs> Okay, um, and the, the the challenges of of academic writing. Um, I, I I don't know anything about um, a ballet degree. I have to be I have to hold my hands up and say um, and I'm completely naive on that. Um, how how did you find you know sitting down and, and writing three thousand four thousand word essays? Well, I I guess to highlight it, if I compare both my dissertations, my my dissertation at ballet school was uh, what was it? It was something to do with construct, uh, comparing the structure of music compared to a solo. So looking mm -hmm. at the kind of the phrasing, uh, the musical structure, and then looking at the choreography of this solo and how they kind of contrasted and compared. <laughs> my my systematic review that I did just you know not too long ago was a comparison of the psychometric properties of hop and jump test in pre-adolescence. So very different. Very different. <laughs> very different. Um, yeah, and, and just like I said about this referencing idea, but the main thing being the critical thinking, which was, yeah. you know, that, that is, um, and it's a really tough one. And I think, I think it's a really, you know, a continuous process. Mm. Um, but yeah, I, and I always think reading is quite a skill. Yeah, it, I remember the first paper I read, it took me about and it wasn't that hard of a paper. It just took me three days because I would keep falling asleep or I would not be able to engage. And I notice as I go along that that that's definitely improved. It still takes me some time. But uh, yeah, that that was a whole new world, especially yeah. the st statistic side of things. I mean, wow, exactly. We've got that coming up later this year. Um and uh, some, some people have told us we need to strap on our, our, our big boy pants for those. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, big girl I mean, pants. yeah, yeah. I'm, I mean, I'm still going through papers now and just having to highlight and think, what yeah. the hell does this mean? Yeah. Um, but yeah, absolutely just opposite ends of the, the spectrum. Yeah. Your um, experience at King's, obviously a two year degree um, doing your master's, um, your first year, were you COVID free in your first year? Or was it the end of your first year that that's when it started to come in? Is that right? It was, yeah, mainly end of, so towards the end of the first year. So because it's the condensed kind of bachelors, we would have, where the, where the first year of BSc finished, that was kind of when COVID really kicked off. And so but right. we had a few months where we were then doing some of the second year stuff. Right. Um, more into the respiratory side of things um yeah so i was uh, i was i timed it quite well i'd moved back home and um yeah so i spent a lot of time at my kitchen table yeah um, on teams whilst everything was trying to be figured out and it was all yeah i really felt for the lecturers i mean what a, a challenge big I, challenge yeah massive to go from yeah. to go from a full-time um academic uh degree for both msc and bsc um and then dragging it through to making sure that everybody's at home everybody's timetabled then correctly and i mean i know they don't do the timetable but you know they're involved in it um and all of that kind of stuff nightmare mm, absolutely yeah. yeah but it was um i i guess i i would consider myself a fairly dedicated or at least disciplined person so i could kind of you know log on and just try and get it done but yeah. obviously and I'm sure this is you know I, I speak for a fair number of people that it was such a shame to have missed kind of half of university and just being present in the lecture hall and yes I, yeah just missed something which yes. is a shame yeah there is there is that there's that that um human quality well although some of us wonder the silver lining maybe would have been exams would we have done better or worse <laughs> Yeah, I, tell, the, yeah the, the, I think the silver lining that we took was the um, Alice's anatomy classes. Um, 
because he, I mean, we we still yet haven't um, had anatomy class from Alistair, uh, but um, oh. the uh, we've had others, we've had others um, this year. Um, but the fact that when you're working at home on Teams, you can pause um, the lecture and then rewind it and listen to it again, listen to that bit again. So one hour, a one hour, one and a half hour lecture can end up taking three hours, but you mm. can't do that. You can't do that live, can you? Yeah. So no, no, and. Yeah. Um, so you haven't had any dissection or anything like that? Oh, we, we did. Yeah, we did in the first year. Okay. We were in. So our, our our year was made up of in the first year was made up of um, four days of online lectures um, and then one day a week we were in in uh, four practical lessons and okay. uh, dissection and all that kind of stuff. Oh, so, nice. Yeah, yeah I, I was the weirdo that would just kind of whilst other people were kind of looking away I was as soon as they said put gloves on and go in I was diving Get in, in there, there straight in there yeah yeah in, yeah. into the extra sessions yeah, yeah. I love it <laughs> I mean I haven't done any extra sessions but I do I didn't I always enjoy the anatomy lesson um it, you know I, I had to kind of you know um the dissection lesson I should say sorry I had to kind of you know get over an initial an initial squeamishness is the wrong word but an, an initial apprehension um but as soon as I was over that I'm yeah, I'm very keen to, yeah, yeah. to kind of learn. So it's good. <laughs> um, thank you for that. Uh, so, what about your, um, you know, your personal experiences while you were at university, um, both your first year and your second year? Um, how did you find interacting with the rest of your cohort and then also the BSCs as well? Oh, good question. How did I find interacting? I did. Yeah, I. How did I? I'm trying to remember. My brain's, you know. It's not what it once was. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know whether physio as a profession and as a kind of degree attracts people that are very comfortable in socialising and, you know, meeting new people because it, as a profession, we meet new people all the time. So yes. I never felt I, <laughs> it was quite funny because there were quite a few people you knew each other from their universities and everything. And I it felt like a scene from some kind of playground thing. I, I was stood and I could see the see the boys talking over there and I kind of just shuffled over and just joined in. <laughs> can, can, can I play with you? Um, but then, you know, and I guess I've come from a very different world, a very artsy and probably slightly flamboyant um, kind of pocket of the universe. Um, yes. So to suddenly be surrounded by a bunch of rugby lads and... Uh, everything there was something that was I was a little bit timid or a bit like say apprehensive um which is kind of all more on me than anything and right. yeah they were very very warm very welcoming mm. um yeah so there was no problem with that and I think because our year you know the first year particularly it's such a melting pot of different ages experiences yeah you know, just people in general that yeah, you you kind of just get stuck in, really. Um, so yeah, my my experience from a social side was absolutely fine. I I, I like to consider myself a fairly nice person. <laughs> and, uh, yeah, exactly. I mean, and you were you were um, uh, in the physio society. Um, uh, were you in there for the? Were you um, taking a role for the whole of your time, or did you just just a second year that you took the, the the role? Yeah, just my second year. I think first yeah. year I was very much. Uh, again you know uh, I was aware of how little I knew and how much I was going to have to knuckle down so um, mm -hmm. I didn't take on too many extra either activities or responsibilities um it was only until a second year I thought okay now I can uh, I think yeah. I might be able to offer something I'm brilliant okay um so with that in mind I mean as I'm sure most people who are listening know you were the um academic secretary for um the year ones um and I, as far part of this, I thought it'd be fun to have on the um, academic, the current academic secretary for for your, for your ones, who's um, who's uh, Millie, um, also a dancer, uh, an ex, ex dancer background, um, and uh, unfortunately she lost her voice, so she can't come on. But she sent me some questions, um, so I'm gonna just ask you a few of her questions. If that's okay. Yeah. Um, she first of all, she said she would like to say massive huge thank you and i echo this as well um you actually made the first year a lot more enjoyable for us um oh. with uh, with everything that you gave us and everything that you <laughs> 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 don't mean to embarrass you but it's just you yeah. know, um absolutely true um i think that 
I didn't realize that that kind of thing happened at university, um, that there was this academic support from from above years. Um, and it was something that, that I, I really appreciated and, and Millie appreciated as well. I'm sure everybody else did too. So thank you for that. Oh, um, good, I'm glad, I'm glad. So she wanted to know how you went from um, having uh, quite a high level of support in year one um, to having pretty much nothing in year two. How did you how did you manage that challenge? Is that support in terms of again talking more from academic rep side or support yeah. in from your your own academic rep when you because you had an academic rep in year one, didn't you? And then mm. there was nothing in year two or very little in year two anyway. Um, how did you manage that? Yeah, I, I guess so. In our in the MSc for the second year, predominantly we're doing um, uh, placements. So a lot of what I've been doing for the past year has been kind of consolidating what I learned in the year and then to the extra chunk we did and kind of putting that in place. So it felt a bit less, there was less new material, yeah. and more of just trying to kind of go over and put into practice what, what we had learned. And I think having done a year already and gained some skills and learning how suits me best um, was probably the most helpful now that there wasn't as much kind of help from a from you know the year above if there mm. was one. Um, and we would kind of help each other as a year um, you know if there was something we were struggling with I think because most you know we were all online and at home that we kind of adapted and would FaceTime each other if we didn't quite get something or um, you know, read over one another's essays and help each other out. And I yeah. think that's, uh, you know, a testament to my year that they, that we were willing to help each other out and had a, a kind of a close knit group. Yeah. Mm. Yeah, I'd say that that was mostly it. And, um, mm. and you've got that shared experience, haven't you, of, of all being in the same boat, you know, um, which you have naturally because of university, but then also because you're all working from home, you've got that, um, that shared experience too. Yeah. So, thank you for that, Archie. Um, so what about teaching? Uh, so I hear that you've done some teaching after you've finished your um, MSc. How did you get into that? Yeah, so I, I mean, as the with my role as the academic rep, I I found that I really enjoyed it. And not only was it really nice to be able to kind of help people out with, you know, areas they might have been struggling with. But for me, well, on a selfish note, it's um, very useful to kind of go back, reflect on what you think you know, um, add to it. And mm. I, I always figure if you can teach something, you're probably quite proficient at it. Um, and so, yeah, so when, as I was kind of going through, I had um, some meetings with some of the lecturers just to talk about my, my future, the big scary future. And, um, what I might want to do and to, I guess the advantage but also the difficulty with physio is that there are so many branches so many areas you can go into that there's so, so many that I was interested in not only from the neuro MSK respiratory side but research and yeah. lecturing or teaching and um, and so I kind of voiced this to um, uh, Laura and Lorna and people like that and they, I, I guess maybe they had some faith in me and uh, said if, if I, it's something I wanted to do, they'd be happy to kind of facilitate that. Yeah. And so on the our final day of um, a university, we did have a little something on the rooftop at King's, yeah, pizza and Prosecco. Uh, it's wild. And um, <clears throat> yeah, I, I saw uh, Lorna, our respiratory uh, lead, and she said if, if they, there was a big shuffle around so they might need some someone for practicals and I of course said I'm you know if you need help absolutely happy to and so I had my first uh, practical teaching session so I came in and taught manual muscle testing mm. um which is yeah I guess part of the bread and butter so you know I took it very seriously um and yeah I, I really enjoyed it and I, I kind of added in a few extra bits just looking at because I I think maybe because it's so still so new to me, like research and kind of critically thinking about everything we're doing. Is it valid? You know, does it have a place and what does it tell us? Is they're a really important question? Yes. So looking at things, I think they also had a goniometry session, which of course we, you know, you can look into the research there, but um, 
looking at manual muscle testing and is it able to distinguish a difference? What are the limitations to it and how does it affect our practice? I think teaching it, I wanted to make sure I kind of did it justice. And yeah. so looking at the research kind of, it will then again help me in my own practice going forward, I kind of, uh, yeah, use it in a way that's a bit more informed. Yeah. Um, yeah, but but it was also great to see, you know, students and their kind of interest in learning and everything like that. So mm. it's a big, big combination of why I got into it. But uh, yeah. So and you're hoping, to, I, you're hoping to do more of it um, still at King's? Yeah, yeah, I would like to definitely. Yeah. Brilliant. Sure. That's really good. So following up from that, uh, Millie wanted to know what advice you've got for her as the academic rep for year one um what could you what advice can you offer her now oh um oh god what advice that's a that's a very good question because i think there's the advice i can give to her personally as in just making sure that as much as you give your time to other people just making sure you have time for yourself um you know it's uh it's somewhat of a selfless role because you are although i've talked about how it's helped me um it you know you are it takes such a lot you know such an amount of your time and yes. i didn't i kind of realized how much of my own time that it would take to kind of help other people which you know it was, it was totally worthwhile and i you know enjoyed it immensely but just making sure that you don't kind of sacrifice too much of your own energy um yes and find that balance but i think if i then talk about it from a more academic rep side um there are some easy things you can do. I, you know, I've sent on some essays to you guys, which I, I think have always been a bit helpful. Yeah. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just trying to think, I think, um, rather than just try and do everything, find out from the groups where they're particularly struggling with. Yeah. Um, and I think be honest as well and, and take responsibility in that if, if you actually don't feel confident with something, just say, you know, that's probably not for me, but I'll, I can direct you somewhere, you know, to uh, to get some help. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, I think mm, I'm just trying, <laughs> I'm just try, trying to rack my brain thinking what could be helpful. It's, it feels like a, a many moons ago. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think that I think yeah. that's I think actually, you know, those those three um, piece of advice are brilliant for obviously for Millie, but I think they're also true of 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 being a student as well you know if if you are struggling with something um and you're not sure that it is that you know the answer to it or you're not sure you know the answer to to the essay question or how you're going to conduct yourself go find out from someone else see if yeah, they yeah. know the answer you know if make time for yourself you know don't just always um uh give 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 or or, or in in the you know flipping it around to, to a student um spend time you know with your head in the books constantly you know, make time for yourself and go out and do some sports or go for, go to the pub with some friends or go get a coffee or all that kind of stuff, you know, and, and, and that's really good advice. I think that that could be flipped for, for, for Millie, but also for anyone else listening to us as well. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, so valuable to one, keep yourself sane and be really efficient with your, your time. Yeah. Um, I guess, that, I guess it just kind of brings to mind just about being efficient with your time is, um, you can reread as much as you want, but I think it's like going to the gym. You can either look at the weights or you can pick them up and, you know, exert yourself. And so example questions I think are wonderful, especially yes. if they're written by someone else, because you can write your own questions, write it in a way that, you know, either gives you a bit of a hint or you, you write to suit your bias. Yes. Whereas if, if I were to, you know, that, that I guess that would be my main advice advice if you want people to really take on information is get them to have to really use their brain try and dig in right at the back there's some kind of little pearl somewhere um, and write it down I think that would be that would be useful good thank you so um Millie wanted to say just a final thing um she wanted to say that uh any any year one students listening um or watching this um uh video podcast um feel free to contact her um she she's very happy to 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 help and she wants to um uh make herself available to you and similarly if you're an, um, an msc student norman is your man i don't know norman's surname unfortunately 
Um, he's your man. He's the academic student for the MSCs as well. Um, so uh, one final question for you, Archie, if that's OK. Sure. What are your top tips um, for studying physiotherapy at King's or anywhere else? Oh. <laughs> um, yeah, of, of course, I'll have to start by saying, obviously, it's all, you know, we're all individual and we have our own own way so I can only speak broadly again like we've spoken about before I think giving yourself some time and some freedom to it's, it's a fine line isn't it between giving yourself enough time to relax and kind of recharge but also don't don't just be on charge the whole time <laughs> um yeah and again I think you know this is also there's a, there's a good book it's called um I think it's called the art of learning make it stick or something and it's yeah just goes through some of the the research behind our you know how how best to learn and use your time efficiently and one of those is you know a stage like repeating of material um but also um testing yourself and you know building upon that i find and this i did before my first year exams which were really it was really helpful i found a spot in a library back home they had a whiteboard and I <laughs> I would choose a subject and pretend to teach it to a bunch of chairs. Sure. And I would go along, let's say it's membrane potentials, and I'd be talking about ions going across one way and the other way and then go. Yeah, yeah. I would suddenly stop and go. Uh, and then I was kind of and, and that process would continue until eventually I could finish it and go, OK, I feel absolutely comfortable with that. So. In whatever way that is, I, I find, again, and like with the academic website, if you can say it out loud and teach it to someone or yeah. answer a question, you're probably quite comfortable with that. Um, so I guess that would be taking on information from a sense of going into, um, uh, not practicals, what am I thinking of, placements. I think when you do your practicals, and this is what I kind of said when I was teaching the manual muscle testing. Don't just because you're working on a bunch of healthy bodies, you're going to be mm. seeing people who have neurological conditions, spinal cord injuries, yes. um, respiratory ICU required weakness, all kinds of stuff. When you're doing these these tests and, you know, there's obviously we could talk a lot about special tests and things like that. What would you expect to find or what would it mean if someone came back with, I don't know, a three out of five what how would that change your your kind of prescription how would it change your assessment because it's very easy to get, go to someone say saying active range of motion okay okay cool that's you know abduction full what if someone were to do this what 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 does that mean <laughs> sorry i realize if this is a podcast if someone can't you know do something <laughs> fully over their head it's a, it mo it's mostly a video podcast but you're right yeah, there are people oh, okay, listening to it as well so <laughs> But um, yeah, what what would you expect to find if uh, and what would it mean if someone couldn't or something came back that was in air quotes abnormal? Yeah. Because um, I found that I didn't do that. I would we would just go along, do do the bread and butter stuff, and then when it came to someone in a uh, you know my MSK placement, let's say that's where my bias is, and uh, suddenly there's someone who can't do it. And they put, oh, oh god I, <laughs> I wasn't yeah. prepared for that no. um so yeah make, making it relevant i guess yeah. i could have just summarized that really <laughs> much more efficiently that's no, great that's great i love it yeah yeah though, i guess that would be my main things i'm sure i'll think yeah. of plenty afterwards afterwards you'll think of you'll think of loads of loads of uh, um responses so yeah yeah if you've got any feel free to message me i'll, I'll put them in the in, in the uh in the outro or something like that yeah yeah and um, you know my King's emails, I think it's still active and will be. So if there are any questions for me, you know, you've now graduated, I'm always happy to take those. It's like archie.james at kcl.ac.uk. So Brilliant. I'm happy to take any questions. Thank you, Archie. So um, thank you very much for your time. Um, we appreciate it and we, we've, I've really enjoyed talking to you. Um, it's been absolutely brilliant. Um, thank you. Great to speak to you.